Hi, boys and girls. Welcome back to Paintbrush Palace. Princess Paintbrush here. And guess what? We are at week six. Can you believe it? I just can't even believe it. And it's already May. Wow. So, boys and girls, I know we've been doing a lot of projects about imagination and creativity. But, you know, that's not just important in art. Being, um, being creative and using your imagination will help you get ahead in life. Remember how we talked about utilitarian objects and designers, fashion designers and jewelry designers and all the different designers, commercial and graphic, and we talked about architects and engineers. In, in any design field, you're going to have to be creative if you want to get ahead. And even if you want to go on a show like Shark Tank and invent something, that is being creative. So that's what I want, I'm all about the, the, during this uh, quarantine time, is that we learn to be creative and use our imagination. And boy, will you go places. So, boys and girls, I have one of my favorite books to read. And I hope you're going to get a lot out of this project because it is all about using your imagination. And I wanted to tell you that I really, really, really want you to draw and then color. That's so important because once you color, it just makes your artwork come alive, and I love it. And remember, I love seeing your art, so upload it on Edsby. Uh, that's the place that I always uh, go to see your messages and, and watch and look at your art, and oh my goodness, they've been amazing, amazing. I'm so proud of you boys and girls. So anyway, I want to get started with this book, and here we go. Bam! So boys and girls, this is called This Little Artist, and it's an art history primer. And um, I think you guys are going to love this book. This Little Artist. Oh, just look at that. So creative. Painting, shaping, making art. With creative joy, hands, and heart, little artists have great big imaginations. I know you guys do. This little artist had Italy impressed, an architect, painter, and poet. He liked making sculptures the best. I bet you guys have heard about um, Michelangelo, uh, not the turtle, not the ninja turtle, but I'm talking about the artist. Michelangelo was famous for painting the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel and for his David and Pieta sculptures. This little artist chose to portray moms and their kids at home and at play, and her name was Mary Cassatt. Mary Cassatt painted tender, loving moments in everyday lives of women and children, which was an unusual subject in the late 1800s. Ah, one of my favorites. This little artist painted pictures of his face, a starry, starry night, and sunflowers in a vase. Vincent Van Gogh applied thick paint with wild brush strokes to show his feelings. Oh, this little artist made blue art for a while, switched to rosy colors, then painted Cubist style. Pablo Picasso. And look at that. Look how creative he was with his shapes. Pablo Picasso and George, George Brock became the Cubism art movement, showing objects broken into angled shapes. Oh, we studied this girl. Lit, this little artist painted very large flowers and animal skulls and, sky, skulls and skyscraping towers. Georgia O'Keeffe. Georgia O'Keeffe sat in her car and camped in a tent to keep away from bugs and the hot sun while painting nature in New Mexico. Remember, she only wore black and white. This little artist built a toy circus from springs, cranks, balloons, buttons, and other small things. Alexander Calder. And Alexander Calder made hanging metal and wire sculptures that are called mobiles. And, or kinetic art because they can move. Nice. Oh, you guys know this guy. This little artist liked attention and fun. His melting clocks and wild mustache startled everyone. <laughs> Grab your mustache and let's all say it together. Salvador Dali and curve that mustache. 
Salvador Dali was a surrealist. Objects in his art often look strange or melted. Oh, and Frida Kahlo. This little artist painted her life story with symbols of Mexico to celebrate its glory. Frida Kahlo was often ill in bed, where she would paint with a special easel. She made 55 pictures of herself called self-portraits. Ah, oh, he's so fun. This little artist used objects like soup cans to make pop art paintings that delighted his fans. <laughs> Andy Warhol began as a shy advertising artist. He became a superstar with many famous friends. Ah, Jean-Michel Basquiat. This little artist was a great poet too. He mixed words with doodles and he painted and drew. Jean-Michel Basquiat used ideas from pop culture, street life, and his Haitian and Puerto Rican heritage in his artwork. So, crayons, paper, paint, or clay, what will you use to make art today? And look at all the artists that we have up here. We have, oh, you guys are going to remember some of these. Leonardo da Vinci, a scientist, inventor, engineer, and the artist who painted the famous Mona Lisa in The Last Supper. And Edgar Degas, ballet dancers were his favorite subjects to paint and sculpt. I'm going to put on my reading glasses because this blue light is reflecting here. Hang on a second. August Rodin, Rodin, Rodin sorry, his best known sculpture is called The Thinker. Claude Monet, one of the first impressionist artists, he painted nature in his garden, showing how light affects colors. Henri Matisse, we studied him. He cut shapes from colored paper and called it drawing with scissors. And that's where I got the term from when I tell you to draw with your scissors and not with a pencil. Janet Sobel, she and other abstract artists like Jackson Pollock trip, trip paint on canvas. <clears throat> Louise Bourget, at about 90 years old, she made one of the biggest sculptures in the world, a spider called Maman. Monir Charodet, and I don't even know how to pronounce that last name. Farman, Farman, there we go. She blended modern ge geometric shapes with older ways of making mosaics in Iran. And you know what? I think I'm gonna have to look her up. I have not heard of her. Ah, there's Yayoi Kusama, who we are gonna be studying this next year. She dreamed about polka dots and decided to cover her art and herself with them. Faith Ringo, we've talked about her a lot. Tar Beach and other quilts she sews tells, tell African-American stories. Christo and Jean-Claude, environmental artists who wrapped entire buildings with cloth. Dale Chihuly. Did you know that Dale Chihuly has a um, gallery in St. Pete? Yes. Um, it's right, it's, it's um, not too far, I think, from the, the Dali Museum because uh, you know Sal Salvador Dali has one as well. So his colorful glass sculptures can look like sea creatures or a garden of wacky plants. El Anatsu, his huge wall hangings are made from recycled trash like metal lids and bottle caps. Barbara Kruger, the questions and slogans she adds to photos surprise us and make us think. Keith Herring, which I I'm not sure if we're going to do a book on him or not. What next? He drew outline cartoon figures and wanted all people to be treated with respect. Jiang Mei Wu. Using math and engineering, she made origami art by folding paper and other materials. And Liu Bolin, this performance artist, paints his body to blend in to his surroundings like a, a chameleon. And look right here. Here's you. What are you going to be doing? Wow, it's going to be so exciting. So boys and girls, you're going to be one of the artists. So I, my, what we're going to be doing, and I love this. I kind of made this up, all these words. Imagine that. Using your imagination, be a creator. 
Use your imagination to create a drawing for a nonsense word below. Will you create an animal that has just been discovered on Earth? Or a machine that has just been invented to help mankind? What about a new food or a fashion trend? What can you create? And here's some words I came up with. Um, my creature that I did, now boys and girls, you can't copy me. you got to do your own creature. I did a striple dottle. So that's my striple dottle. I have Bobimble, Skeely, Slimber, Clebum, Fumble, Squigglum, Rebon, Needlebean, Wishweedle, Flutie, Meltem, Milty, Niblat, and Kunsley. So I'm going to leave this here so you can look at it and you can always rewind and, and the directions are right here for you to see. Let me pull this down a little bit so you can see my whole paper right here. I'll just back this up here. And you can see the whole thing now. So I'll just leave it and we'll get that out of that shadow. Okay. So here's what you need to do. Remember, you're going to choose one of these words or you can actually make up your own word if you want to. You do not have to use one of my words. But I want you to make the wildest, craziest, most creative, imaginary thing that you can make. And it's going to be whatever you think and you're, when you close your eyes and you use your imagination, that looks like. Remember, draw it big on your paper and color it in, boys and girls. That's going to make all the difference in the world. So, boys and girls, this is just to... Um, say that I hope you have a great time doing this project. You know, there's art encompasses every subject. Some people think art is not that important, but art uses every subject. We learn reading, reading when we talk about art and our steps that we take for art criticism. Uh, we use science when we're uh, making clay and making it move and, and mobiles and, and all kinds of things that, that we create that way. Uh, we use math a ton. Oh, geometry. I use a lot of geometry. Um, we read, uh, we, yeah, we already talked about reading. Uh, and we were actually um, doing that today, is reading. Um, and uh, so you have every um, social studies about where artists live. I could go on and on. So it is very important to learn about art because it does encompass every subject. So, I wanted to be, really tell you this, though. A lot of kids want to use their words when they're trying to do art. But as artists, we use our art to show the words. So, we're still using words, and there's more reading right there. So, boys and girls, I hope you'll be so creative. I cannot wait to see your pictures on Edsby. And I hope you have a great week, because I know I'm going to have a great week as well. So I'll see you next Monday. Bye.